Hi, this is Connor McCauley, Application Engineer from Saratech, and welcome to our Tips and Tricks tutorial series. Thank you for watching this video on how to set up Solution 200 Design Optimization in SimCenter 3D. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful tutorials. If you have any suggestions or specific requests for tutorials on topics that you'd like us to create, please add them in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions about anything covered in this tutorial, please be sure to ask your questions in the comments below. Finally, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please check out our other videos here on our YouTube channel. We also offer our online customer enablement series held on the first and third Thursdays of each month. This is a free 30 minute live video tutorial series where our software experts will share tips, techniques, and knowledge that will help you sharpen your skills. To sign up for this series, please contact us at info at so today we're going to talk about Solution 200 Design Optimization. And as you can see here, we have a plate with a stiffener, a few T-brackets at the bottom. The T-brackets are connected with C-bushes, as you can see here. And there's different property regions that we're going to vary to optimize the design. So here we have a force, 600 pounds and it's pointing in the global x direction as well as constraint on the other end with everything fixed except for y rotation and then another constraint on the three nodes on each of the brackets and these nodes here are merged Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up, show you the C bushes that we have. We have a titanium sheet, which is this here, the stiffener on the top, the Kimmel pockets, which are in yellow, and then the T brackets on the bottom. Going back to the simulation file. Go ahead and create a new solution. Set it to Solution 200 Design Optimization. Hit OK. It's going to bring up the solution step. Go ahead and hit OK on that for now. We're going to go ahead and create a new subcase for buckling, because buckling is what we're going to be working with here. I'm going to go and drag down the constraints from the last one. So we need both a static and a buckling case here. The static is going to apply the load that we just added and then it'll use that for buckling. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the solution. So nothing for general, nothing for file management or executive control. In the case control, we're gonna go ahead and set up a design objective that design objective is to get the minimum weight. So under the response, we have labeled minimum weight, total model weight. Go ahead and hit OK. <clears throat> and under design constraints, we have all of these, but we're going to set those up per subcase. And our bulk data, we have the design variables here. So these are going to be the different thicknesses that we're varying for each property region. We want a constant term of zero and a coefficient of one. And we're going to set our initial values, our lower bounds, and you can set your upper bounds if you like as well. 
We have a different one for each. We're going to add that in. Hit close. So now you see we have all four of our design variables that will be adjusted to reach our design objective within our constraints that we're going to set up. So here are constraints. So for the static, we're going to do the stress constraints. You can see for each of those, we set an upper bound on stress limit that we wanted. So you're going to have to look up the item code. And the item code will tell you which stress output you're going to be relating that to. Go close out of that. And then go into the buckling subcase. So here we're going to go from 0 to top 1 using one mode. And here's where we're going to use our eigenvalue constraint. So the lowest eigenvalue we want is 2. We're going to set it to buckling modes. So what this is going to do is iterate the design, make sure that we have a buckling mode higher than two and stress lower than what we had set for each of those different property regions. We'll go ahead and solve the solution. Runs pretty quick with a simple model like this. Go look at the results. So this is our buckling mode after running through all the design cycles and then stress just under 3000 like we had set. And that value that we chose under stress was um, Von Mises bottom. That's why that one comes out to 3,000 exactly. Here you can see we have a mode of 1.99. Go ahead and look in the FO6. You can see all of our different outputs. So that tells you our initial weight and our final weight. And all of our design variables, the initial thicknesses, And then finally, our final thicknesses that we came up with. So what you can do is take these and go ahead and re-input them into your model, and this will be your new optimized design. As well as if you open up the punch file, it actually creates the inputs for your input file that you can copy directly over. Thank you for watching this video on Solution 200 Design Optimization. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful tutorials. If you have any suggestions or specific requests for tutorials on topics that you'd like us to create, please add them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out our other support videos here on our YouTube channel and tune into our customer enablement series held on the first and third Thursday of each month if you'd like to get more helpful information. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.